Hi everybody, it's Andrea and I'm here today to do a book haul. So other than the books that we saw in the box that I got from eBay, the 40 books, these are the other books that I picked up or were given in the month of July. So I'm going to start with this one. This first one is <clears throat> Time Bends by Arthur Miller. This is his autobiography. And I bought this because I wanted to research a particular part of his life with Marilyn. So I thought I'd see what he had to say. And apparently about this part, not a lot. So um, I will read it at some point. It's going to go on my to-be-read pile. But um, basically it's for research to do with his life with Marilyn and his take on it. Obviously his take is going to be his point of view. But of course his point of view is valid. So that's that. Now... Paul's mum got me a book for my birthday but forgot to, to give it to me at, at the end of June and that's the Reverend, River, River, oh, I can't think, the Reverend Richard Coles' new one, Murder at the Monastery. So this is the third in the Daniel Clements mystery and I'll read it out. So Canon Daniel Clements has suffered a secret humiliation and to recover he takes respite at the monastery where he was a novice. But the monastery doesn't allow the break he needs, for tensions are building there too. There is a death at the monastery, and Daniel suspects it might be murder. Meanwhile, back at Champton, Daniel is the subject of village gossip. His mother, Audrey, is up to something again. There's trouble at the dress shop, bother up at the big house, and the puppies are running riot. As dark secrets unfold, can Daniel solve the mystery at the monastery without the help of Detective Sergeant Neil Van Loon? So I've enjoyed the first two in that series. So I will be honest, I am looking forward to reading the next one. Next I've got A Terrible Kindness. This is by Joe Brown in Row. I have no idea what this book's like, but I picked it up because it sounded interesting. So it's October 1966 and William Lavery is having the night of his life at his first black tie do. But as the evening unfolds, nudes hits of a landslide at a coal mine and it's buried a school, Abavan. William decides he must act, so he stands and volunteers to attend. It will be his first job as an embalmer. And it will be one he never forgets. His work that night will force him to think about the little boy he was and the losses he has worked so hard to forget. But compassion can have a surprising consequences because as William discovers, giving so much to others can sometimes help heal ourselves. So I thought that sounded interesting, obviously being in Wales as well. Um, got this little book which is called well icons of style marilyn monroe life advice from screen legend and it just says arguably one of the most recognizable actresses of all time this unauthorized collection of inspirational quotes demonstrates the spirit of a true style icon and reflects on fashion elegance success beauty and beyond it's a sweet little book um, with cute quotes in it and some very nice pictures but nothing special the quotes are either from marilyn or from people she worked or knew with. So, nice little book to add to the collection. It's not a must have, but it's nice. And I've got uh, Find Her First by Emma Christie. These ones, most of them are from the charity shop. Where is Death Campbell and who can be trusted to bring her home? Paramedic Andy Campbell has a secret he can't tell anyone, not least the police. But when his missing wife's image is found at the home of a suspected killer, detectives start asking questions, and they're not the only ones. The, the race for truth leads them from far from their home in Edinburgh, but who will find her first, and will they save her life or take it? That's uh, my kind of book, really. Uh, Another Day, David Leviathan, I can't pronounce his name, Leviathan. Um, so this is... I think a sequel to Every Day. Yeah, The World of Every Day. Every day is the same for Rihanna and she's convinced herself she deserves a distant moody boyfriend. Justin, she knows the rules. Don't be needy. Avoid obsessing him. Never get your hope up. Then out of the blue they share a perfect day together. Perfect that is until Justin doesn't remember anything about it. Confused and yearning for another day as great as that one, Rhiannon starts to question everything and that's when a stranger tells her that the Justin she spent that time with wasn't Justin at all. I haven't read every day so I'll have to pick that one up and read it first but I've got so many books on my TBR it's not going to make a bit of difference. 
This one's one I picked up for my mum. She's now read it. So I've had it back and I will read it. It's the children from Gin Barrel Lane. Ten-year-old Jack Larkin has seen more than his fair share of shocking sights growing up in the notorious Crown Saloon. Broken hearts and broken bones are just a fact of life in, gin pa in a gin palace, but for orphan Dolly, the Crown is her last hope. After the death of her mother, Dolly ran away from her sleazy stepfather, Arthur, only to find herself living on the streets. When Jack discovers her hiding in the backyard of the Crown, he persuades his mother, Nellie Larkin, to take Dolly in. But Dolly has a secret, a very valuable secret, and Arthur is determined to get his clutches on her at any cost. And when local hardman Ezra Morton joins in the hunt, the Larkins may have to risk everything to keep Dolly safe. So, yeah, sounds all right. I wonder what the secret is. I'm sure I'll find out when I eventually read it because I've got that many books. Uh, yeah, Charity Shop, Country Village, Winter Wedding. I pick up winter books all year round and then December I put all the December ones with winter, Christmas, etc. in it out and read them, some of them anyway. Uh, so this is by Cathy Lake. So Claire Green and Sam Wilson are getting married and everyone in Little Bramble is excited for the event of the year. But Claire and Sam are busy people and have left organising their wedding to the last minute. Luckily, wedding planner Hazel Campbell has recently moved to the village. She had what she thought was a wonderful life in Edinburgh with a successful business, a loving fiancé and her own wedding coming up. But when she called her groom to be in bed with her best friend, she fled, leaving everyone and everything behind. Little Bramble seems the ideal place for Hazel to start over, and she throws herself into planning the perfect country village winter wedding. She starts to find herself again, and soon she realises that a second chance at happiness might be just on the cards. Ah, I like winter ones, I like Christmas ones. Everybody loves Christmas. Uh, Jeffrey Diva, The Broken Window. I love Jeffrey Diva. It's one of these tiny little mass market paperbacks. He is watching you. He knows you better than you know yourself, and he is using his knowledge to plan your death. But you are his not not only you are not his only victim. He is also watching your killer. Okay. He is about to get away with the perfect murder. Ooh, sounds good, doesn't it? Ah. Uh, then we've got No One Saw It Come In by Susan Lewis. When the unthinkable happens. Hannah has a loving marriage, successful job and two grown-up children, but her world is crumbling. An imaginable crime has been committed and the finger of blame are pointing at her loved ones. Hannah must work out who is threatening her family before it's too late. No one could have seen this coming. Probably a bog-standard thriller, but I do like them. Uh, this one was given to me by a friend. Uh, this is uh, called The Toll House and it's by Carly Reagan. It's a ghost story. I haven't read it yet. It's going on my pile though. Um, a house with history. That's how the estate agent described the old toll house on the edge of town. For Kelda is the perfect rural home for her young son Dylan after a difficult few years. But when Kelda finds a death mask concealed behind one of the walls, everything changes. Inexplicable things happen in the house. Kelda cannot shake the feeling of being watched and Dylan is plagued by nightmares, convinced he can see figures in his room. As Dylan's behaviour becomes increasingly challenging, Kelda seeks answers in the house's mysterious past, but she is running out of time. Because something has awoken and now it won't rest. Mm. Does sound pretty creepy. Yeah, the person I got it from wasn't sure they would be actually their sort of book because it's a ghost story. I love ghost stories. And Halloween time is coming soon. And talking of ghost stories, I've got another one here, Christina Henry, The House That Horror Built picked this up in Waterstones when I was in there the other day. Uh, single mum Harry Adams has always loved horror movies. So when she's offered a job cleaning for revered horror director H. I can't say his name, Javier Castillo, she leaps at the chance. His forbidden Chicago mansion, Bright Horses, is filled from top to bottom with terrifying props and costumes, as well as glittering awards from his decades-long career making films that thrilled audiences and dominated the box office, until a family tragedy and scandal forced him to vanish from the industry. Javier van values discretion, so Harry tries to clean the house immaculately and to keep her head down. She needs the money from this job to support her son. But then she starts hearing noises from behind a locked door. Noises that sound remarkably like a human voice calling for help. Though Javier, has, though Javier lives alone and never has visitors, Harry knows that not asking questions is a vital part of keeping her job. But soon she finds that the house, 
and her enigma enigmatic boss have secrets she cannot ignore. I just think that's as it and look at that cover. Ooh, that, that cover is absolutely amazing. Only one more. Um, I wanted to read Jack the Ripper book. Uh, I haven't read it yet, but it will be going straight to the top because I, I, I'm on Jack the Ripper groups on Facebook and I like to read the posts and they were talking about this was a good book back in the day. Obviously it's, it's old one now, but I still like to add the older ones to the collection every now and again so I can um, see what's going, you know, see what the thoughts were back then as well. So this was, this is the Jack the Ripper Whitechapel Murders as told to be written by Kevin O'Donnell um, but it's the research of Andy and Sue Parler with a forward by Trevor Skinner so it just says if you only read one book on Jack the Ripper this will tell you most of what you need to know this is a concise clear and highly visual account of the Whitechapel Murders based upon the researches of Andy and Sue Parler Andy is related to the first victim, Polly Ann Nichols, and his anecdotes of family history that bring that background alive. Working with an emigre East End community in Essex, Andy and Sue have collected various new pieces of evidence and a possible artefact, the shawl worn by the first victim, Catherine Edders, which we now know is not shawl, sure. it's table runner, and it's not Victorian, it's Edwardian. Um, However, new background material on it is presented on four of the five victims for the first time and the parlours feel they have cracked an important code about the murders, revealing a pattern that implicates the Houses of Parliament. Old oral traditions about a royal doctor or the Queen's son being involved are fleshed out with new facts that open up a whole possibility of a royal conspiracy at work. Kevin O'Donnell has taken the researches of the parlour and composed a highly readable narrative of the Society of 1888 and background to the murders. While being open-minded about the conclusions drawn, he's always insisted on only recording what is plausible and making it clear when something is hard fact and is speculation. So, yeah. So when they refer to um, a shawl that Catherine Eddis had, this is something that came up, obviously, back when this book was published, which was... Let me see if I can find out. 1997. Um, obviously, most recently... It's been brought to the forefront by Russell Edwards with his book named Jack Ripper, in which he says it <sighs> contains the DNA of uh, Aaron Kosminski. However, there is an error in the D There was an error, in, I don't know what happened, the camera stopped for some reason, uh, in the DNA processing where they put a dot in the wrong place. Uh, but it could have been the DNA from any one of billions of people. So, And the other problem is that the, the provenance of the shawl is not... 100% accurate. They say it came from a police officer who was not there at the time. It's not listed in any of Edda's possessions. That type of fine material, had she had it, would have been pawned. She wouldn't have had it on her. She would have pawned it for a drink or for a DOS. She would not have had anything remotely that quality on her at the time of her death. So it's, it's pulling its you know strings and again with the royal conspiracy that's all been negated that came about in the 70s originally with Stephen Knight's book but still it looks to be an interesting read so I thought I'd read this one I mean Ripper books are coming out all the time I think there's as many books on Ripper as there are on Marilyn and I've got over 300 on Marilyn I haven't got that many on the Ripper but I'm working on I just find it fascinating so those are all the books that I got in July uh hope you've enjoyed this uh, little video um Hopefully there won't be as many books in August. There will be some because I bought three the other day, but um, I am staying away from eBay. Jennifer's on holiday, so there's no charity shops going on at the moment. Uh, so who knows? Maybe it'll just be the three and I'll save them all them in October. Who knows? Anyway, I'll see you all soon, guys. Bye.